they had a drag queen story hour at an event in Portland, and the library is celebrating it. They're posting photos of it. We were told, those of us who objected to drag queen story hour, we were told, you're awful, you're bigots, you're transphobic, you're a hateful person, you're hate mongering. That big debate that broke out on the right between So Rob Amari at First Things and David French at National Review over cultural conservatism versus libertarianism, that debate was kicked off by Drag Queen Story Hour. So Rob Amari's piece said, look, when we reach Drag Queen Story Hour to children, we have gone too far. We need to re-examine some of our libertarian premises. And what so Rob and other people were saying is this, this amounts to child abuse. It's not, maybe it's not physically abusing children, but it is so confusing. It is so utterly absurd, the ideology and the gender ideology that you're indoctrinating these kids with. We should not do it. All called haters for that. Well, guess what? Turns out that the photos have now been deleted, but the library posted photos. Uh, apparently as part of this drag queen story hour in Portland, Oregon, the drag queen who would come in would lie down on the floor and then encourage all of the kids to crawl all over him. What does that have to do with reading a story at a public library? That's pretty weird. Just imagine for a second if a straight man wearing a business suit walked into a public library and said, okay, I'm gonna, what I want to do with my time is I want to come in here once or twice a week and I want to read books to a lot of like little children. I want the little children to gather all around me and then I'm going to lie down on the ground in my business suit and then I'm going to encourage the kids to crawl all over my body. Okay, is that, is that cool? Of course not. The guy would be arrested if he did that. But because the man puts on a dress and makeup, the pop culture, the leftist culture celebrates it takes photos of it, is so blind by their ideology that they upload the photos to the internet as though this is perfectly normal and worth celebrating. It's insane. That is the effect of ideology. That is the effect of language. Because, because, if, if, a, if a woman, let's say a young woman or a mother or something, came into the library and she was kind of playing around with the kids and they, maybe they were on the floor, you know, and she was reading the story to them and then, I don't know, a kid jumps on her back or something, right? Because mothers are nurturing, because women are nurturing, it, it would be a little weird, but it wouldn't be that weird. It wouldn't be as weird as if a straight male in his 50s came in in a business suit and said, hey kids, I'm going to lie on the floor, rub all over me, please. But for some reason, when you say it's a, it's a man wearing a dress who looks like a woman who's transgender, when you add all of these different layers of apparent victimhood to it, then it's to be celebrated. Then we're going to post pictures of that. What it shows is the currency of victimhood. In Texas, it's not just this one drag queen story hour in, in Portland. In Texas, when people objected to drag queen story hour, same thing. Or you're a bigot. You're a transphobe. You're a hater. Turns out one of, the, one of the guys who was coming in to do this drag queen story hour was a convicted sexual predator. He was a sex offender. Maybe they should have checked that, but they're so blinded by their ideology because of the language and because of the currency of victimhood. If you can claim victimhood in 2019, you can do anything. You can do anything you want.